are live on Facebook. Welcome, everyone, to the Town Hall Academy from the Remarkable Results Radio podcast. And look it up here. Look it up here. We have a sponsor now for the Town Hall Academy and the Academy podcast. I want to welcome Jasper Engines and Transmissions. And we have to tell you a little bit about Jasper. You know, a family keeps their vehicles an average of 11 years. Where's the first place they turn when the drivetrain fails? Why, Jasper, of course. A vehicle is a major purchase. It should be trusted to a 100% associate-owned company for quality remanufactured products. And I had a chance to go through the Jasper engine plant. Oh, my. You know, if, if you love, you know, how things are made, what a great tour if you ever have a chance to go there. So thank you, Jasper, very much for being uh, with us and uh, becoming a sponsor for the podcast. I'd like to welcome, oh, you know, we're here to talk about something that's just so important today, social media, and I have three incredibly talented people that know social media like they know how to make a good steak, and I want to, <laughs> and I want to welcome. That could be questionable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Greg. I'm you've, hungry now. <laughs> you've yeah, promised right. if I get down to Delaware, you're going to cook oh, okay. me a good steak. All right. No I'd like problem. to welcome uh, Carrie Lynn Roddenberg. She's the owner of Turnkey Marketing that exists to help shops effectively communicate to your community, customers, and potential customers all the good work that you do so that your repair shops can be known as the trusted go-to shop in your area. Whew, I had to take a big breath for that one. <laughs> Their work provides cutting-edge marketing that actually works and increases card count. You can hear Carrie Lynn with me on her own episode 214. And then there's Mr. Greg Buckley, the owner of the 50 plus year young Buckley Auto Care in Wilmington, Delaware. He's a member of ASA, an ATI coach, a member of the Delaware Automotive Service Professionals Group. He's the vice president of Napa Business Development Group and is involved as an advisory board member of Kakui along with Auto Vitals. Okay, I have to have a deep breath for this. You can hear Greg in episodes 19, 54, 60, 100, 155, and 226. <laughs> and he worries that someone's going to overtake him. It's that guy, Jeremy O'Neill, and that guy, <clears throat> Malin Newton. He's been a ter <laughs> tremendous contributor to the podcast. I thank you so much. We oh, covered social pleasure. media with Greg uh, in an episode 54 and 155. And, and we just can't talk enough about social media, so that's why we're doing this again. And this is the first academy on social media. And we also have Ron Haugen, another tremendous contributor to the academy and the podcast. Ron owns Westside Auto Pros in Des Moines, Iowa. Ron is an ASE master technician, has his AMAM, -AM, right? Correct. Yeah. Morning, see, I, morning. Yeah, yeah. His certification and he's an AMI certified instructor. Ron is co-chair of Vision High Tech Training and Expo. What a great show, Ron. Uh, we, we did a roundtable discussion with him uh, on that at Vision. He's the president of the Des Moines ASA chapter, and you can hear Ron in episodes 107, 204. I believe that was the roundtable at Vision. And on the Academy sessions, and I don't have the names of them, but I'm now releasing the Academies uh, as podcasts, episode four. Uh, three, four, and 14. So thank you so much for your con contribution. And the reason that you're here is uh, I uh, obviously subscribe to social media, to all of my podcast alumni, and I, and I see what you guys are doing. And Carrie, you're an expert. But Ron, I want to start it out with you. Is social uh, media social, not sales? Yeah, I always uh, tell people it's social media, it's not sales media. And, you know, you, you look at the concept behind it, uh, people go there for, for a social aspect. They go there to, to, to interact, to mingle, to, to talk to each other, to, to see what each other's doing. Uh, they don't go there to look for the buy three, get one free strut sale. They don't go there to look for $20 off breaks. That's not where they're going. And I personally think it's a mistake to see companies, you know, whether it be automotive or any other company, uh, trying to sell something on social media uh, because it turns people off and, and they may unfriend you, they may unsubscribe from you, whatever the situation is. Uh, but, but more importantly, um, I utilize it and feel that it's there for, for top of mind awareness and to engage with people, not to, to try to you know, slam something down their throat. I love the stuff that you post, Ron. 
<laughs> Thank you. You know, Ron, I, I really do because, you know, Ron is a towing company. And every once in a while, you get a really cool car on the, on the, on the, on the flatbed, right? And we so do. he immediately takes a picture of it. And it's not necessarily a sales pitch, but Ron talks about, you know, I guess if I could, if I could tow a Lamborghini, I could do your car, right? <laughs> yep. Yep. If we can handle a Rolls Royce, then a Chevrolet Cruze isn't going to be a problem. Right. Mm -hmm. And and those are, I guess, that grassroots connectivity that you're looking for. You're looking for someone to stop, Absolutely. to look, to read, to smile, and obviously to remember. Exactly. That that's the top of mind awareness, you know, factor. So you know, hopefully, when their car needs to be towed or when their car needs to be serviced. You know, they'll remember that that unique picture that they saw on social media. You're you're trying to to put something into their head that's gonna that's gonna stick. Carrie, you're a professional at this. Is Ron doing all the right stuff? I love that you like you're doing so much community stuff and like showing what you're doing and showing people, you know, essentially, hey, we're doing we're picking up this car, we're doing this for this person, and kind of planting that seed. If you need help, we're here too. Um, but, and I totally agree that people go onto Facebook or to any social media, right? When they're bored, when they're waiting for something, when they have an extra spare minute before they go to bed, first thing when they wake up, people go there to be entertained. They go there to fill time, to see what's up with their friends, what's, you know, what people are doing, um, share what they're doing. And also interact with people and interact with brands. So I think that Ron's doing a lot of great things. Greg, you, mm. uh, you post great information on vehicles and repairs. I mean, you're, mm -hmm. you're engaged with your, uh, with your customer base or your followers, shall I say, mm -hmm. in, in really the, the safety and the reliability of vehicles. And where do you get all your stuff? Uh, right from the shop. I mean, the examples that goes on daily at, at any of our shops, you know, it's such good content that with the technology, especially our phones today, I mean, we can make a post and a story, you know, like Ron, Ron will take a picture of a toe. Okay. I'll take a picture of tearing down a head gasket or recently where we had to open up a F-250 Lariat. You know, you know, I, I always say this in class too, people like, you know, people like to see the train wreck, you know, they like to see examples like they may not understand it, but you know, uh, you know, people with uh, you know, our colleagues in the audience who may have a, a body shop, my gosh, they have such good content. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but man, they could take a story from where it's wrecked to, you know, now, hey, look at this beautiful piece we put back together. Um, and, and what I try to do is, in an entertaining way, is, is to show people, you know, what we're like from the inside out. Um, the difficulties that we go through in trying to repair a car, you know, that kind of helps in them understanding you know, okay, here's the price of what it is. And you, you can see the man hours. That lariat was like 14 hours where, you know, I, I showed the, the young man the day after when he came in to pick it up. I said, he goes, I didn't want to touch it. You know, and here he, he owns a bus yard. He goes, I don't want nothing to do with it. Glad you do it. And, and if we learn to use social, you know, education wise, and like I said, I practice the five E's. Educate, entertain, engage, entice, and elevate. Those five key are key words where I try to incorporate that into every post, you know, and uh, I, I think, you know, between Ron and myself and you know, like Carrie preaches and, you know, there's others out there that, you know, live by that. And that's what we end up doing. So that's, that's my goal, you know, with using social. How often should you post Carrie? I would say you should post once a day. If you start posting too little, you're not going to be seen as often. Um, if you start posting too much, you're going to be seen as annoying. So Facebook actually has their own algorithms, kind of like how Google has algorithms. We all know Google has that, but um, we often don't think about the fact that Facebook has that too. So Facebook likes to see certain things, and it often likes to see one post a day. You know, I, I, I need to learn right now, and so does the entire aftermarket about what you just said. Uh, I, heck, I think we've all probably been to the, uh, the, the webinar that a social media expert would get on and, and tell you that you need to post eight times a day because the life cycle of a post, you know, goes away so quickly. And if someone does sit down and has that one or two minutes to scan through it, they may never see your post. 
So is it mm-hmm. that Facebook is going to help you out if you only post once a day? Or should, you know, the pundits say you need to post more often? What, what, uh, this is a question for everyone. Because yeah. You would, you would know what the residual effect of a single post or multi posts would be. I, I would say that's a really great question. And I think there's a lot of confusion with that. With Facebook, if you scroll through your newsfeed, you'll see posts from yesterday or like a few hours ago. It's not the same as Twitter, where if you post once, it shows right then. And then if someone doesn't see it right then, they're not going to see it because it's going to get buried beneath. So um, it, it will, it's not that Facebook will help you out necessarily, but it's that people will engage with your content more and that will notify Facebook, hey, this is good content. People like what they're seeing. So then they'll show it to more people, even if it was posted a few hours ago. What do you guys and think? I, oh, well, I, I, like, I like the fact that I try to do probably three to four a day. Sometimes, I, not a day, excuse me, a week. Uh, and then other times I get on a run. Like, you know, but one thing that I try to do uh, that's very important is know what you're going to say, get in and get out. Meaning that, you know, the content has got to be good. And if it's good, it becomes shareable. And, you know, I've had posts where, you know, it's been shared uh, 33 or 50 times, somewhere in that. Okay, well, that's great for me. And then I know that I can, okay, that's one big bundle. Then I can do smaller posts underneath of it. So if, if, if I get the activity, that's wonderful. You know, and as far as content, you know, we can't forget that, you know, as Facebook is evolving into more of a, a search situation, they've got great algorithms. And they will become a true search situation. So when you start to play in the arena, it's more what we say you're entertaining, but the content has to be as inviting or as uh, understandable as you can make it for the common, your, your, you know, our, our customers or our clients. So, uh, you know, three times a week is good. You know, not everybody's going to get a chance to do it once a day. Once a day, if I do that, I'll run through Instagram back to Facebook yep. and run that channel, kind of utilize the ecosystem that all of these platforms are starting to go to. So that's my strategy. And, you know, I, you, you got to be active. That's the key part. Active and you have to have a strategy. Ron, before you answer, um, I follow you and I see your posts often. So I'm telling you that. And I am not a person who spends a lot of time on social. I care about what's going on in my world. So now that I'm telling you that, how often do you post? Uh, we, we try to post once a day. Um, occasionally, I mean, if there's something cool or interesting going on, I, I, I might post a second time during the day. But <clears throat> uh, and, and to kind of echo what Carrie Lynn said, I, in layman's terms, you got to look at Facebook like high school homecoming. <laughs> the, the king and queen of homecoming are the two most popular people in the school. That's how they get elected. And, and Facebook is, is the same way with their algorithm. I mean, they, they want to see you posting uh, original content, good content, you know, once a day or, I mean, at least every other day. I would recommend once a day. But they also want to see engagement. You know, it's one thing to post content on there and four people liked it, nobody commented on it, nobody shared. But then if you post content on there and 30 people liked it, four people shared it, seven people commented on it, all of a sudden Facebook looks at that with their algorithm and all of a sudden that becomes the homecoming king or the homecoming queen. And, and that's why you will see, you know, you'll go to your news feed and, and you'll see a post from two or three days ago. Well, they're showing it because people are still commenting on it and they're, and they're still interacting with it. So if you think of Facebook like high school homecoming, I mean, that, that, that's where you want to be. And so you want to have content that, 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 you know, not only is interesting, but engages with people. You, you don't want, you know, some canned content that, that a company provided that tells people what a cabin air filter is and, yeah, and, and, and why it's important. You, you want a picture of a, a dog driving a car and have people write captions to it because that's where the engagement comes in. True. Uh, good stuff. And that's what you really want. You want, you want the engagement. That's what people forget. They think that, you know, all the fans that you have and people that like your page and blah, blah, blah. It's not about that. It, it's really engagement, you know, and, and how you can move up, up the ranks, as Ron says. For me, I look at it, and Carm, we've discussed this before. Growing up in the service station business, 
<clears throat> the fuel island was my social media. I mean, I got exactly. to see, I got to talk to the community da- weekly, daily, you name it. And we'd share stories. Um, we had a board, a yellow sign board that would announce birthdays and anniversaries for our clients. Um, and that's just, this is just something, you know, new. It's, it's a newer version of that for me. And that's why I guess I'm very comfortable with it. I don't mind, you know, if I flopped or whatever, you know, the personality is there. Ron, you do a great job with your photo captions on different, uh, you know, different things that are going on. You know, it's like really cool stuff. All right. So, you know, that's, that's the personality side of things. And people will gravitate towards that. And you have to have a personality. I mean, you know, it, it, you can't be a board um, and expect people to relate to you. This is an open forum uh, for us as shop owners and especially small businesses to get our name out, to let people see what, you know, what we're all about, that we're just not a machine. Um, you know, we have a personality. So take advantage of it. I mean, it's, it, it's, it could not be easier. I think right now it's the best time that I have ever witnessed for a small business to be in front of their client base every single day, every moment. And you can't be afraid of that. And I keep telling people, I said, what would you talk about if the, if your client came to the front counter, would you shut up and say nothing? No, you would talk about the football game, the high school game. Hey, how's the family? Well, now you just got a different medium to do it. So jump in, you know, Carrie, what would you tell a new client that they, um, you're not doing all their work. Are, are you helping your clients find those Facebook moments? Yeah, that's a great question. So we do do a lot of the work for our clients. We do do the posting for them. We respond to people and engagement for them. Um, but we also have a lot of personable things. So we're often in contact with our clients and talking to them about what's going on in their shop. Um, you know, when their wife's birthday is, when their anniversary is, when their shop anniversary is, um, you know, we're getting that personal information and then we're writing those captions for them and posting them. So we are doing a lot of work for, for our clients as far as that goes, for sure. Where are you getting those organic pictures though? Those moments? We'll ask them for it. Uh. So if it's a picture of something going on at their shop, or something going on with their family or their grandson's birthday party, we'll ask them to send it to us and then we'll post it for them. You, you, have, to, you have to be involved in this, Carm. I mean, you can't, you can't just go out and hire a company and say, handle it for me right. and then turn your back on and not watch it. I, I mean, it, it takes some time. It, it takes less time if you use a company like Carrie's, but you, you have to go out and snap some pictures and, and text or email them and give them some information if it's not personalized, if people go there and they see, you know, uh, informational type stuff that, that comes in through, through an outside service, they're not going to engage with it. I mean, I mean, you, you've got to take some level of ownership in doing this. And, and, and we all realize time is valuable and, and, and most shop owners don't have time to do this, but there's somebody in the shop I right. could go back and take a picture of an engine disassembled or, or a cool car or a dog in the waiting room. There's somebody there that could take at least one picture a day and send it off to the person doing it for you. Got it. Well, so you can't abdicate this responsibility, right, Greg? No, you can't. I mean, it has to be part of the culture of the shop. And I'll tell you, one of the things I suggest, and you know, those of us that have a digital uh, inspection process, um, we use uh, Auto Vitals and we we harvest every photo from every ta- every pad and that goes up to our iCloud account and from that iCloud account i pick and choose from i've got over 20,000 photos that i have breakdowns of certain cars types makes when it happened and why so i have a story that's ready to go all i do is sit and poke pull it download it up copy make a story and i'm done and i can do it from the phone it's it's a it's we have the tools and we'll reward the shop with the guys, you know, for picture of the week. I mean, it's just that good. And these guys, go ahead. You know, you just said something great. You have the tools. Yeah. And, and I keep thinking, well, then, then you have to have the time. You actually have to be able to find the discipline 
Well, you we've, we've auto, well, we've automated it. And the hardest thing for a shop or anyone in marketing to do is to come up with content. Well, message is important too, but you need the content. Well, all of us who use these tools, the, these inspection processes should be able to, and you can with configuration, you have a one account and every piece of content that's created within the shop is, is visible to me when I'm home here in the office and I can create a story out of a particular job. Now, I can make it funny. I can use it for SEO purposes. I can put it on Google+. Plus. I can do everything. You know, it's the content. And these guys know. I mean, my team knows that I use their photos. So they try that much harder. It's, you know, I mean, they, they try to do the best they can with getting a photo. Once they get that photo, it's lock and load. I mean, and all of us can do this. I mean, it's not like we have to go out and purchase photos. And in class, I tell each guy, I said, look at your wealth of information that you have. I said, one photo. If you were to go to iStock Photo and download a cylinder head, a picture of a cylinder head, that would run you $30, 30 bucks. So take that and look at what you're creating. Now, is that an asset that you should have? Yeah. All right. So what's it cost you? All right. It costs me a terabyte of cloud storage for, I don't know, 10 bucks a month or a hundred bucks a year, whatever the case might be. So, you know, from that point we have, we have what we need. Now all you do is create a story and that story should be as natural coming from us because we're the experts. So we write a quick story. We know who we're talking to. Boom. Upload. We've got the deal done. So Ron, are your people constantly on the hunt for stuff? For social, yeah, it, yeah, it becomes culture. I, I mean, technicians will come up and they'll be, "Hey, you might want to take a picture of this," or they'll tell the yep. service advisor, "You might want to take a picture of this." I have, and this just happened this this last week, and and it's not un, unusual. I have other shop owners from across the country send me stuff, and I, you know, to post on my Facebook, and I'm like, "Why don't you post it on your own Facebook?" <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but anyway, I mean, I mean they, they send you stuff to, to do that. And you know, we talk about time here, Carm. Uh, as a business, I mean, you know, you're, you're going to post the days you're open. So, I mean, we're looking at, at five or six posts for a week. You can do all those on Monday. It doesn't take that long. You, you can can all that stuff up and get it ready and then just post it later or time for the post to come on later. If you use, you know, software, whatever the situation is, it, it's not – it's not this long, painstaking process. I love it. Building relationships. Uh, I'm a new customer, uh, everyone. Um, Carrie, maybe you can chime in on what you teach your clients. I'm a new customer. How do you get me to um, like your page? Yeah, there's multiple tactics. Um, one actually is kind of like offline. So one of the ways is to have something at your desk saying, hey, like our, like our Facebook page. Um, there's another really neat tactic where if someone wants to get in, if they want to use your Wi-Fi at your shop, they might have to sign in through Facebook and that will give them access to their Wi-Fi. And then when they're there, they can like the page. They're much, much more likely to actually like the page, um, something that Facebook offers. So that's a really neat way. You could also do Facebook ads to tell people that you're there and to share who you are. Um, I think that social media is a place that people like to go to be entertained, but I think there's a lot of value actually in Facebook ads and using it as a place to sell. You know, Facebook is one of the most intelligent platforms we have ever experienced not, not one of the, it is the most intelligent uh, marketing platform we've ever seen, ever. Mm -hmm. And so use that to your advantage. And if you're a good shop, why wouldn't you tell people that you're there? It's not, it's not just beating them down and bait and switching them. It's actually telling them, hey, we provide this value. And with marketing, you know, sometimes you do need an incentive because that's just human nature. People get attracted by that. So if you're a really good shop, I mean, by all means, it's almost like you have a responsibility to be telling people. And if that's where people are, if that's where your customers are, then use that. Talk to them. So you can, you can do an ad to get more likes so that people will see you more often in their news feeds. 
And I, I like to just to piggyback on that. That's a very good point you made about the value of the customer and your clients coming in. One of the exercises I try to get, you know, the class to do uh, when they're back at the shop, something, you know, you, you do, not I'll say routinely, but at least once a quarter or half a year, go through your feed, go through your personal feed or your shop page or whatever, and compare that to who you have in your database. I mean, you've got people are there now I'll look at their, their LTV, you know, their long-term value, see what their spend is. And you'll be amazed at the type of clients that you see that are friends and fans versus exactly what their spend is. And then you can start to say, wow, I have people who I really should be talking with. Not that I have to add to, not, I have, I don't have to sell them, but you know what? They're willing to follow me and be, be my friend uh, and, and know what's going on. I think I have a commitment or I should have a commitment to, to be part of their world as well, you know, some degree. So that's that communication bond that we have and it's right there for us. So good points. Thank you. Hey, one moment, please. Uh, I would uh, like to remind everyone that Jasper is a new sponsor for us. And here's another reason to choose Jasper. It's their commitment to continuous improvement, their investment in research and development, product updates and remanufacturing processes means Jasper provides the perfect product. We thank them for coming on board and being a great sponsor here for the Town Hall Academy. So, Ron, relationships. Uh, do you plain old ask someone when they're at the counter, uh, like my Facebook page? Uh, or here's a, a business card, here's my, here's my page? You know, it's, it's no different than a review. I mean, I mean you're going to have great success if you just ask them to. Um, but but here's, here's another... Um, and I'm happy to share this with people. Buy it. Buy their like. And what I mean by that is look at Facebook like it's like it's direct mail marketing, like it's a postcard marketing. We think nothing of going out and buying a mailing list and then sending, sending out uh, postcards to these people to their mailbox to look at it and come in for whatever offer we have on there. So one thing that we've done very successfully to build it is every one of us uh, in business has a little league team that comes and wants us to sponsor them. They, they've got a uh, some of them going to church camp that wants to be sponsored. All, all these all these people come to you and they're knocking on your door. They they want a donation for this, a donation for that, and we need to give back. We need to do that. But what we've come up with is a process, and, and we share the process with them, and we say let's run a Facebook like campaign. And so we give them a 48 hour period. At the beginning of 48 hours, we look at how many likes we have. And at the end of 48 hours, we look at how many likes we have. And they can promote it any way they want. And we pay them X amount of dollars per like. So it might be a dollar a like, $2 a like, $3 a like. So all of a sudden, they're using their social media, their email blasts, their contacts, and they're telling everybody, hey, let's, let's put together, you know, go like – Westside Auto Pro's Facebook page over the next 48 hours, and they'll donate. They'll donate three dollars for each like. Um, I, I had a, a very small school in, in a suburb of Des Moines. Um, they raised almost fifteen hundred dollars from me on a Facebook like campaign for their after-school prom party. They had one heck of a prom <laughs> party, and, and so, and these these are your future customers. Mm -hmm. Because all of a sudden, you're going to start putting stuff on there. These are people, a lot, oftentimes, are people who have never been to your place. They're going to start following you because you're going to show up because of Facebook's algorithm, and they're going to start seeing you, and then all of a sudden, maybe their car breaks down. Maybe their car needs to be towed. Maybe they just have a question about a car. But when people start reaching out to you through Facebook, asking for an appointment, asking questions about their car, you've hit a sweet spot. So look at it like a mailing list. And, and and just just go out and buy it. I love that. Great, great I, idea. It's a great idea. Wow. I love that you look. You see it like you kind of see it as a parallel to direct mail. It is. It mm -hmm. is. I yep. I feel like Facebook. It like Facebook ads are the new direct mail. That was my next question. I, we really need to talk about this. Um, <laughs> we really do. Talk to me, Ron. Greg, have you ever used Facebook ads? That's, that's a hanging question right there. And Carrie, yes. I believe you believe in them really well. You've just mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And what have you used it for and how has it worked? What, do you have a budget for it? 
Uh, so you 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 really have moved away from organic, and occasionally we'll do an ad. Absolutely. Yes, we go ahead, Greg. I say we 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 ran we ran a few ads on the uh, um, breaks. Uh, a free breaks and we have a whole landing page myfreebreaks.com it'd be seasonal and we promote it through facebook and run the ads and we had a tremendous turnout um there's a lot of activity that we have around the coupons and and what they you know what they grab um but the return was magnificent the the thing though with wait a minute let me with, let me time out mm -hmm. we were talking about not using facebook for sales but you're okay with using the ad to generate yeah, I, I generated an ad. I mean, it was a special thing. We were working at the time. We were with, uh, we were doing a breaks for breast uh, situation, yeah. and we wanted to really promote it. So I bought the domain myfreebreaks.com and utilized that and had a landing page built and went yeah. with that, and it was very, very successful. Um, the only thing that I would have to say you have to be prepared for is that you can get some negative remarks on your ads you know people will comment and you know you need thick skin if you don't have it <laughs> you know it's going to okay. be a detriment to continuing but you know again uh it is successful and and as carrie ann says is that you know carrie lynn said that you know um it is one of the smartest if the not the smartest algorithm in terms of dissecting the client base you know, any which way you can. So it's really great for a shop to go in or small business and select down to age, uh, what you drive, uh, what kind of movies you like. I mean, you've got this, uh, you know, whole demographic and you've got, and they have all the profiles uh, that you can select from. So, and you can't do it. I mean, if you think about it, you can't hire a kid to go from windshield to windshield in your neighborhood or door to door for less than what you could do a Facebook ad. I mean, there's just no way you just can't, you, can't, you just can't do it. So it is a big advantage. Ron, your experience with ads. You, you know, Greg, Greg hit it on the head there uh, with, with, with his break deal. It did it breaks for breasts. Yeah. So it, it, it was a charitable break offer. Which, which people are going to warm up and accept. He didn't just go on there and put an ad, hey, we got $20 off breaks this week, because that's more of a turnoff for people. Um, you know, we use it like like we recently had a celebration for our 20th uh, year in business, our 20-year anniversary, and, and we used it to promote that. Um, you know, I, I think targeted uh, is a real key. You know, the algorithm on Facebook is so smart. And, and, and you can, I mean, you can drill it down to, to the nth degree on your marketing. So like one of the things that we do is anybody within a three mile radius of our shop gets a special offer for an oil change on their birthday. And those are the only people that ever see it are the people whose birthday is today because mm -hmm. Facebook knows that. Uh, we, we, we did a special uh, offer uh, on Memorial Day, and it only went out to people that were veterans within a certain radius of the shop. And and so you're thanking them for being a veteran, you're giving them a special offer, and they take advantage of it. So so there's, you know, that kind of marketing on there, I think is totally acceptable. Mm -hmm. And and we've had really, really good response. Just, you know, in, in the last uh, 30 days, through, through the veterans and the um, birthday offers, um, we've had 420 new likes on our Facebook page, people that took advantage of those offers. You know, you just mentioned, uh, and Carrie, I know that one of the things that you wanted to talk about was how do we know if social media is working? And Ron, what you just said to me was, oh my God, I've got a return on investment. I can see it coming in the door, taking advantage of these uh, wonderful veteran opportunities, birthday opportunities, which doesn't really sound like a big sales pitch. It's, oh, it's special. It's for me. Exactly. Talk to, talk to me about the, the, the ROI. E, e, can you really quantify it or is it, is it just a, a good warm feeling because you see it working? Um, of course, it's a good warm feeling. Uh, the, the return on investment, you know, Greg had mentioned it, it there's no cheaper marketing out there than social media. I mean, you can, you can throw 80 bucks at a Facebook ad campaign and reach thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of people, 
you know, as opposed to, you know, what it costs for postage or, or, or any other uh, form to reach those people. So, you know, it doesn't take a lot for the return on investment. And it's no different than anything else. If you send out a, a postcard with a, with a $29.95 oil change, those people are probably going to come in for an oil change only because they don't know, love, and trust you yet. But, but it builds future audience and it, get, it gets them into the system. And so, so we've got a platform set up where, you know, you, you respond to the, the birthday special and, and then you have to, you know, fill, fill out a form. I mean, we have to capture your, your email address and your other uh, information in order for you to actually receive the offer. And, and so now, you know, we can put you into our marketing wheel in more than just the social media way, the email marketing and the other avenues. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do something just like that for our customers. We have like, we have people come in. So I always call it like a ping pong machine, right? So if you have a ping pong ball, it goes to one side and hits the next yep. side, the next side and keeps going until you get to that destination that you want to get to. So Facebook and social media, they're just one, you know, rung in the wheel and it should bring them on this customer journey, this customer life journey to get them in the door. You know what we we had talked Karm before about how most people we don't even realize it but psychologically most of us need 7 to 13 touch points before we feel comfortable moving forward with giving someone our money or giving people our time or our vehicles that our families are going to be in um, you know on Facebook or any kind of advertising might be that first place where they see you and if you can give them something if you have an incentive that is you know, irresistible or attractive enough that they'll give you their information and then you can continue to build that relationship and not just continue to sell to them, but to continue to educate them, fill them in, kind of come shoulder to shoulder, kind of come alongside them, build that trust so that by the time they come to your shop, they already feel like they know, like, and trust you. I mean, that is they, yeah. awesome. So, so yeah. no liking and trusting is coming from your posts. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, and it really is. I mean, it's, it's like, I can't say it's a modern day word of mouth, but it certainly does uh, accelerate the, the, the word of mouth process where, you know, a lot of, a lot of everything is started offline, you know, and then it's generated through the channels and they get to know you from your website, from your social uh, stuff, you know, everything they see and they witness. So what you contain content wise and what you're like and what your personality is exposed online through social channels, um, you know, that's your calling card and people will relate to that. So like, you know, Carrie and Ron will say, well, I'll say, listen, I want them to know me before they walk in the door. All right. I mean, it's, it's that easy. Uh, here we are. This is Buckley's, you know, this is West side. This is, you know, all of our shops, please, you know, know me. Uh, here we are. Uh, this is what we do. This is how we're going to do things. Uh, we have fun. We're professional. We have everything here for you. And it's, it is a trust thing. And social media absolutely allows us to, you know, amplify that trust situation. Carrie Lynn mentioned something that's very important that we have to think about here. And, and it's great. I, I love you, Carrie Lynn, just because you're a marketing person that gets it. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to push stuff down people's throat. You understand it. Yeah. And, but, but, you know, you, you give them a special offer. Let's say it's for birthday or, or, or veterans day or, or whatever the situation is. Yeah. You can give them an offer that's too good to be true because you're not spending a ton of money to get in front of them. Right. All of a sudden the, the, the discount, the special deal right. can be a really special deal because you don't have any money invested in printing materials or, or a television commercial or any of that stuff. It, it's, it, 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 this is, just, I just feel for people in our industry, this is such an untapped market. Yeah, I, I'm is. just having a blast with it. You know, you bring up such a great point. You know, Greg, I, I, Carrie and Lynn, you may not know, but Greg goes out and uh, on a monthly basis teaches a, a, a marketing course. Greg, how many in the class that you have um, really are opening their eyes for the first time to the value of social media? A lot. I'm really impressed and I'm really grateful, one, to be doing the class. And secondly, by the time we're done, the light bulbs are on, you know, and they get excited because I, I really feel that, you know, most of us love to create. We love to have our personalities exposed and be out there. You just don't know how to do it. 
And once they get through the class and, and we're doing, everybody tries to do a live video just to, just to get yourself in front of the camera, break that barrier and, and forget about your, you know, forget about the way you look, just get out there and do it. When they get to that point, man, I, I mean, they're, they're ready to go back and start chomping at the bit and, and, and start the process of, all right, Hey, now I get it. Now I want to do it. So uh, it, it's awesome to, to, to have shop owners get to that point. Yeah, we like, so with turnkey marketing, we do a lot of marketing for shop owners because we see so many shop owners saying, I want to do this, but I don't have the creative juices and I don't have the time. And so I want some, I want good content to be created. If I can't do it, I want someone to do it. But we believe exactly what you're saying that really, really, really great things happen when it's coming directly from the shop owner. So we're actually launching a class in the next few weeks where it's step by step by step on how to do social media, on how to do um, Facebook advertising, what content to write and things like that because it's so important and it can right. be done. It's just, it's just hard for people to get over those, those hurdles. It really is. Understand what to write. And the biggest thing, as I say, so you can, you can go with, you know, a third party or carry, they, they can, they can come to you. But I said, the first question that's going to be asked is, well, what do you got for me? And if you, if you go, I don't have anything, I, well, you're at a disadvantage because one, you're probably going to be paying more for someone to write the content and to, to get all this stuff for you. And secondly, you're never going to really learn the true value of, of, of making content. And, and, mm -hmm. and I go, you got to start. I mean, write a post, get a post out, you know, and, and do all the simple things that as marketing uh, folks, we've learned a long time ago, you know, if you got to write to the mom in the minivan, put the picture of the mom in the minivan in front of you and write a story about it. You know what I mean? It's simple stuff. Grab the picture of the engine block that you know and talk about an engine that breaks down. Grab some sludged up oil filter and write about the sludged up oil filter. You already know it. It's just getting it from here to out here. Yeah, you know. And once that barrier is broken, yeah. you're on your way. Well, I mean, I'm not really a writer. Is. I mean, you want me to blog? It's it, it, so you're you're right. I, I I think some of some of us have to come out of our norm and and be a, a different person than you are. You hire Carrie to write the words. Carrie, if, if you were working for me and I said, listen, this is the sludged up oil filter. Here's the, here's the eight bullet points. Would you write that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I might get on the phone and talk to you about it a little bit or kind of go from your email or just doing my own research and knowledge, you know, kind of fill in the blanks for you. Got it. So if, if you're good at it, you do it. And if not, Obviously, you can hire out, and there's companies like Carrie. Carrie's out there, Carrie yeah. Lynn, Carrie Lynn's company. <laughs> you had mentioned uh, a bunch of times, and I think all of you have mentioned a bunch of times, the Facebook algorithm. Who would have thought that that word algorithm would be so important in our lives today? <laughs> and I remember just getting an email this week about someone saying that Facebook has changed this and changed that. It's amazing how often Facebook does a shift or they change things. How often do you all pay attention to that? And does it matter? Uh, I pay a lot of attention to how like Google or Facebook or any of them will change. Uh, I think it's important to keep up on it. Uh, Facebook's algorithm was a company I believe called Atlas and uh, they were acquired by them um, six years ago, I think there was a fight between Google and Facebook to get this uh, company because they had this, they had made this incredible algorithm and with fa Facebook's platform of grabbing every little bit of social profile from you, you know, what you like, you dislike, you know, movies and all that stuff. It's now being, it's now coming forward where this, this process is so powerful and so good for the small business person. It could be considered evil from the personal side because it is collecting all this data on you. And this is one of the things <laughs> you got to understand. You know, you got to say from the personal side, you can't stand everything, all this stuff they're knowing about me. From the small business owner side, you got to go, I love everything <laughs> they got to know about me, you know, because it's important. Um, but it, it's actually, I, we're, we're talking a lot about Facebook and, you know, it, it has become the go-to platform for most small business because it's so easy 
to use. It's so easy to market through. Ron, you said it many times. You know, there's not another platform out there that, that you could just go boop, 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 and with it for 80 bucks or so, you're out there. You know, where Google, you got to do a lot of homework and look at the, you know, stats and, and, and analytics and all this stuff. Um, so it, it, that's why I guess our, our attention here is with Facebook and social media, but we, can't, we really can't forget Google on the other side, what they're doing too. Ron, I, you, you pay attention to it or you just rock? Oh, yeah. No, no, you, you have to pay attention. And, uh, you know, Google, Google and Facebook uh, are probably the two I pay the most attention to, which you have to remember, I mean, they're not going to issue a service bowl in it that says, hey, we changed our algorithm. <laughs> oh, that's so good. That'd be funny if they did. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll never happen. <laughs> Wait and, a minute. Uh, a GSB or an FSB, right? A, a TSB. Yeah, TS, TSB. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know that, but I know that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Google. Yeah, I get yeah, it. Right. Um, okay. But that isn't going to happen. And, and and so, um, I mean, you have to read, you, you, you have to watch it, what's going on. Um, you, you kind of have to track and look and see, you know, what works, what doesn't work. And, and by all means, I mean, you know, listen to, to other industry professionals and, and leaders as, as to, you know, what's going on. And I mean, you know, you, you look at like, you know, just, uh, you know, Google, you, you know, and their algorithm to, to rank high on, on a, a Google search. I mean, the things that I personally did eight, nine years ago, they're gone. They're a waste of time. Some of them came back, some of them went away, but, but, but you just, you have to read, you have to listen, you have to pay attention. And if you don't have time to do that, then, you know, I mean, you know, find someone that will help you do that. Um, but, but hold them accountable. I mean, don't just write them a check each month and assume that what they're doing is working. Cause like anything digital or electronic, it can be measured. It can be quantified. I mean, it, 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 it's there and you'll know, you can tell whether or not it's working. Got it. And your, and your customers will tell you too. You know, your customers will exactly. comment when they're in the shop. They'll be like, Oh, I saw that post or like that joke yes. that you said about the dog, you know, that was really funny or the cat who's like, it's Friday. You know? <laughs> People love that. But you're absolutely right, Ron. You have to test things. You know, you have to, whether you're doing an ad or a post, whether you're paying a company or not, like before you invest even $80 right away, I test multiple different things, multiple different words, multiple different pictures, multiple different offers to see what people respond to. And I'll test that for $5 a day, something little. And that's another great thing about, about Facebook, instead of writing a check for $4,500 for direct mail, which I love direct mail still, but you can test for so cheap, yeah. which is so great. You can, that's the important thing. But it's hard, it does change a lot. Like Facebook, you know, for example, a while back you could just be posting about your shop or about your business all the time and just say like, come on down, we have this sale or we'd love for you to give us a call. Well now Facebook is so intelligent and they're also a business, so they want to make money off of you. And so they have this algorithm, right? So if you're promoting your shop, like come down to get your break changed or come down for whatever, um, but it's not a paid advertisement, they'll actually right. knock you down in their algorithm. So that's why it's so important to be keeping up with it. And yes, it's work. You know, I spend thousands of dollars a year going to trainings and flying all over and masterminding with other marketing people to figure out what's really going on in real life. But otherwise, if you don't, if you can't like keep up with what's going on, you're going to be spending money on things and time and effort, not even realizing it's actually hurting you. It's actually doing yeah. the opposite of what you're going for. That's, so that's if, if you knew it 30 days ago, it's old, right? It doesn't apply anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I have a disclaimer that I, cl I, I put it up in the class Y. Disclaimer. The things you learn today may be irrelevant when you walk out the door this afternoon. <laughs> you know, because I do. And we all laugh at it, but I said, it's true. I said, it could change. And we were in class, the last class I had. And in fact, uh, Google had opened up their small business uh, uh, business pages all over again. And then YouTube came on live you know I'm, I'm streaming in the class and i go see what i mean i here you go brand new in the middle of the class things change that's how fast social media and digital marketing in general can really uh, you know you've got to stay on top of the game you know so. 
It's okay. like the day old donuts at the convenience yeah. store. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Oh, yeah. I can still eat a day old donut. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, love those peanut things. <laughs> hey, um, <laughs> Facebook, we talked all about it. But, you know, uh, Greg, you may have mentioned Instagram earlier. And then, of course, there's yeah. Twitter, Google+. Plus. Are they relevant? Um, they are in their own light. And, and I'm not a big user of Twitter. And I'm just now starting to see the benefits of Instagram. As for Google+, Plus, I think with the introduction of what Google is doing with my small business all over again, I think it's starting to, it's going to start to, to trend upward in terms of a place to be. Um, it came out like a rocket ship. Everybody jumped on board. Um, Google didn't know what the heck it was going to do with it mm -hmm. when it came out. And it kind of went by the wayside. And, you know, um, now I, I think it's got some momentum, momentum to come back. Not so much as a social site, although there are some very intelligent conversations that happen within Google+. Plus. It's, a, it's definitely an elevated platform. You know, um, a lot of photographers love it stuff like that. But the small business section, now you can place uh, content as you could into your Facebook services page. So when I say con competition is good in this field, um, Facebook allows you to put all of your services in, as many as you want. You want a radiator flush, you want all that, you, you know, whatever you want, you can put in there row after row. And you can buy it from Facebook. I mean, the things are set up so that they can purchase it beforehand. Well, now Google is coming back with that. And in your small business page where people search, you know, now you can fill it with just, just not your hours and reviews. Now you can start to put your specials or your content, you know, and your call to actions. That's huge because that gives people more of a, an interesting, uh, more time spent on looking when they come upon you, they get to zone, they see you, they read about you, uh, and then you can uh, get them deeper into the funnel. So. Very Ronnie, good. do Very you good. use uh, Twitter at all? Yeah, Instagram? yeah, we, we we use um, and, and there's there's services or, or platforms. There, there, there's 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 software out there uh, that that makes it easier. So so like everything that we post to Facebook will automatically get posted to 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 Google Plus. It will automatically get po get put on Twitter. You know, so you're not running around doing you know mm -hmm. a whole bunch of you know social medias. Um, Instagram's interesting because, because, you know, it, it started out, it grew and then it kind of lost steam and, and now it's coming back. And, um, and, and we really started experimenting with that about 60 days ago. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're using Instagram to build our, our Facebook following. Right. Um, and, and so um, the, the jury's out on that, but, but I'm seeing some, some positive things that are, are, you know, making me believe in that and, and continue trying that. Um, and then there's also, you know, Greg mentioned something really good with the, with the, you know, your, your Google listing, your, your Google small business page. And I, I have nothing to, to back this up other than my own beliefs, but I think we're going to see a day in the future where websites become obsolete and, and, and what you're going to have is you're going to have your optimized search engine listing, like, like your, your Google listing, and you're going to optimize that. And, and you're seeing that trend already with, with hotels and restaurants. I mean, you can, you can go search a hotel, come up with a Google, their Google listing over on the right-hand side. You, you, can, you can make your reservation from there. You can see the – you don't need to go to their website anymore. All the information you need is there. And people are creatures of habit. And if I go to that listing, the reservation's in the same spot, the phone number's in the same spot, all that information is in the right spot. I'm not jumping around all these, you know, different pages on their website looking for what I can't find. And I really think websites are going to become a dinosaur. And, and that's, that's just my opinion. I think you're spot on with that because I've been questioning it for the last two years, looking at the trends, Ron. And I've even had conversations with some of those that build websites. And I said, you know, my statistics seem to be faltering a little bit. And, you know, I said, exactly. you know, right. And I'm looking at it like, all right, uh, you know, they look at the homepage and that's about it. So how deep do you need to go? But social media, again, we go back to, and, and I mentioned it about private networks. This is where social media can go because once a person, like you said, you're a creature of habit. If they're a creature of habit within Google, they know just to, you know, Hey, you know what? They don't even have to type anymore. We have, 
uh, sure. Google Home, Alexa, and Echo, and uh, we're going to have the Apple uh, Home, iHome, or whatever you want to call it. And it's going to be uh, call Westside, uh, call Buckley's, call you know shop owner uh, for my services. And or it says, hey, I need a car repair. Well, you know, it's all going to channel vo by voice. And there's some great statistics that show that voice uh, search is really increasing tremendously. Wow. Um, so that's where I, I'm so glad you said that, Ronnie, because I'm thinking like, am I on an island here with this one? You know, but uh, <laughs> yeah. no, you and I are on the same island. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, you know, I'll so, be Gilligan. You can be Skipper. I'll be Skipper. There you go. <laughs> um, but no, I, I to to the point. Um, we have to redevelop how we market, and our our social media channels is where we should be focusing on. Uh, Number one, that should be our number one goal is, is really build out through social. Take a platform that you like and you're comfortable with. You don't yeah. have to be everywhere. Um, but when you do decide on a platform, hit it, hit it hard, grow it, you know, and then build a base around that. Hey, I just yeah. want to let everyone know that we're releasing every video academy as podcasts. Uh, they're actually taking off like fire when I release them. They're, there's just so many people listening to it. Reason? It's tough to always be in front of a video screen to be able to catch these lessons. So every one of these are being released as a podcast. I want to thank Jasper Engines and Transmissions. So why purchase a Jasper quality remanufactured product? It's their people. A Jasper associate is dedicated to high quality customer service, committed to excellence, is professional, and has a pride of ownership as part of a 100% associate owned company. Thank him for sponsoring the Academy. Carrie Lynn, I'm going to give you the last word. All right. But yeah, I, I totally agree. I think that websites are going to be obsolete. I think that they're the, where people are going is social media pages. And that is the new website in a way. Well, you know, whenever I get these two guys on, there's always some incredible revelation, you know, either, either Greg alone or Ron alone because they're connected, because they're really um, visionaries and, and they're thinking deep and, and far into uh, where the world is headed, not only in automotive repair and technology, but as much as you guys do with, um, with customer engagement and social media. So thank you, Ron Haugen, Greg Buckley, and Carrie Lynn Roddenberg to come on and talk social media, how-to strategies, and man, you hit it out of the park. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Carm. Thanks thank for you having us. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. My, my pleasure. Great job.